Slacklining, you know, the origins of the sport, basically one inch nylon tubular webbing is, a, is your standard material that people will use to build anchors, uh, rock climbing anchors. And uh, they said, let's just see how much tension we can get this on, get on this strap basically between two trees and see if we can walk on it. And so uh, that webbing has a lot of play, nylon stretches, uh, side to side, up and down. And so those were kind of the origins of the sport. It is distinct from tight roping. Um, but when you see them, you know, at first glance, there are a lot of similarities. What I tell people is tight roping, the line, there's a lot of weight in the line as it's suspended between the two points. And so your foot, you're not going to manipulate the positioning of that tight rope all that much based on your own weight. And so you use a pole as your counterbalance, okay. as your, as your counterweight. And so if you're leaning a little too far this way, bring the pole like this, whatever the slack line material, which is typically one inch wide. Uh, the two most common materials are polyester or nylon. Nylon is going to be stretchier. Uh, polyester is going to be lower stretch. And then the rest of the characteristics are determined by the weave of the strap, essentially. So you can you can go real deep into different weave patterns and how a webbing is woven. We don't necessarily need to do that, but uh, how the webbings are constructed uh, really determines how they're going to behave under tension. Okay. Uh, and so there are many other materials that slack lines are made out of beyond nylon and polyester, but you're playing with the dynamics. And so you have the dynamics of the material, which includes the stretch and just the weight of it. And then the length of your line, if you have more material out there, it's going to be more material to stretch. So that gets really interesting. Uh, and then the amount of tension you put on the line before you start walking it uh, makes it interesting too. But to get back to like the clear distinction between tightrope walking and slacklining, tightrope walkers use the pole a lot for their counterbalance. The slackline has so much play laterally and then stretch up and down that your, your counterbalance comes entirely from how you manipulate your body and foot positioning in relation to the slackline. So you can move it underneath you. You can throw a little bounce into it just to steal some energy from the line if it starts wobbling like this. Uh, you can just give it a little push and that'll kind of take some of that wobbly energy and turn it into a uh, you know, an energy, a bounce. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the difference between slacklining and tightrope walking. Recently, I maybe within the last, actually, I can't really say this for sure, but the slackline length record has now far surpassed the longest tightrope ever walked. Don't ask for the specifics there, but I know that it has, uh, which is cool. It, uh, you know, uh, just got to make that point. Did, um, um, did your just side question but like you grew up skateboarding how much like crossover has there been from that to like because you've always been like you've had crazy balance snowboarding skateboarding does that uh help quite a bit with this i'm sure i'm sure um in slacklining yeah for me it was skateboarding snowboarding i love wakeboarding a little bit stuff yeah kind of the board foot oriented sports i love um <clears throat> so huge crossover uh and that definitely helped and it was probably one of the reasons that i enjoyed the sport uh so much uh other really uh, other great slack liners they come from like a speed skating background which makes perfect sense long you know boarding and shit yeah long boarding oh, oh, yeah, and gotcha like and the skate, um skate as when you think about because sport and people that come to it are often coming from at least a background in something else and so to compare uh not necessarily what you did before and what you do now because many people like i still go snowboarding and enjoy that and slackline and whatnot but what makes slacklining so unique is that um it does fall into the category of like extreme sport in terms of um, 
the height you can achieve and really like the, the focus that's required and the determination in terms of needing to have lots of practice to be ready to approach a line that is really cool, like what you saw in some of these pictures. The, the thing that I find so appealing about cyclining that it has really grabbed me is like the safety component, like snowboarding, skateboarding, it scratches that, like that kind of like exposure adrenaline itch, um, going real fast on a skateboard, hitting a big kicker, weaving through trees, uh, uh, you know, going down the mountain, whatever. With slacklining, it can get real intense, but as long as you, as long as the rigging is always good and you follow a fairly straightforward um, set of safety practices, uh, it's a sport without many consequences, no matter how intense it gets. Mm -hmm. And so like, say you're like having fun hitting like a 60 foot kicker on a snowboard and maybe you throw a big fat one and then maybe you're ready to go for a 360. And then it's like, as you dial it up, the possibility to, to slam there or for something to happen that just kind of ruins your day is always there. With cyclining, sure, little minor injuries can occur. But the like the Highline rig is so overblown, at least it should be strong. And we can talk about how we've kind of with the nonprofit tried to communicate and teach standard safe rigging practices and stuff like that. But um, with just the um, how you can progress in the sport and minimize the possibility of really anything dangerous happening to you or any any safety risk and then that's in contrast to how just the magnitude of what you can set up in terms of some of these lines looking like holy shit like on a snowboard you know you're 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 riding hard same with mountain biking like you you push it you did some wild stuff in that day um and maybe you took some risks slacklining i mean one of the last lines we we rigged up one of the last big ones anyway it was like just shy of 1500 feet long between the two anchors and then in the middle you're 600 feet off the ground just balancing on this narrow strap and to be able to do that like your brain is screaming like all of this positioning is not what is i'm supposed to be this this is not suited for survival yeah, the position you're in right now. But if you're able to know that you set this rig up, it's redundant, everything is really safe. And you can kind of keep that confidence at the forefront that like, yes, this is scary, but it is OK for me to be doing this because what's going on internally at that moment? When you get into high lining and when you start to approach um, these lines, it's absolute body freak out panic mode just your adrenaline uh, well yes when you're learning and when you're first getting acclimated or when you take the next step and get on something really scary like that much higher or that much longer um you're like uh uh you're like primal reactive reactions are coming into place uh, coming into place so my hands used to go numb uh and then like when you're staring down this super long line trying to like get collected to stand up and see if you can take one step like i used to have like the straight up tunnel vision just closing like so disoriented because of everything that's happening you're just like and you just fall off and so obviously in but the leash catches you it's only four feet long so you're like oh god oh thank you okay i'll get back up and try again um when when you, that happens like once you've fallen does it loosen up a little bit totally totally yep uh when you're getting uh when you're kind of getting familiar with a scary line we'll say just like get the whip out of the way because you'll you'll go out there you'll sit and you'll be waiting to stand for like a long time maybe it's yeah. like just get it over with stand up fall let the leash catch you remantle the line stand back up and then you might be ready to go just to finish up on that thought though with the the high lines like you'll always get a little bit of heebie-jeebies right when you set something up and it's new and it's scary um but by and large 
going out onto those lines now, as long as we're following this, the practices, the safety and rigging practices, you are rigging with people that you trust, that you know are not going to skip a step if they're unsure about anything, they get a second set of eyes, all that good stuff. Um, <clears throat> that like uh, primal fear response for most people will eventually just completely shut off. Hey, if you like that video, make sure to hit the subscribe button and follow our page for new weekly content.